Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to The Toast. Happy Tuesday, everyone. It is so great to be back after a really gorgeous bank holiday. Thank you, banks. Thank you, presidents. Thank you, Jax. Hey, Jax, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Turdy, on my own show, for giving me the space to say hello to everyone. I hope everyone You're had welcome. an amazing President's Weekend. It was so glorious to have that weekend, to hold that weekend. To hold. To have and to hold. I had an amazing weekend, thanks for asking. My staycation was such a success. And I'm so glad that something that we said on the show inspired me to book it. I don't know what it was. We're so inspirational. We're constantly inspiring people, including ourselves. Yourselves. Ourselves. Um, yeah, it was a gorgeous three-day weekend. I have to say, um, I've always really believed in the three-day weekend, four-day work week, but to experience it and see what life could be like, you know, every week for the ratio of four to three versus the crazy ratio we currently have of five to two, I'm even more inspired and more motivated to restart my campaign for the four-day work week. But turdy. It wouldn't be special if we had it every week and then you'd start Shut cam up. campaigning for five and two on the other I wouldn't. End. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Maybe centuries ago it was a six and one and they were like, if we only had five and two, we would be so happy. We'd be so rested. And now look at us asking for four and three. Well, that means we're heading in the right direction that one day we'll be seven and oh. <laughs> and that's the dream, isn't it? Be careful what you wish for, Turdy. Okay, all I'm saying is the four day work week is a proven concept and I experienced it. It was incredible. And I know what you guys are going to say, like, you know, we do run our own business. It's up to the businesses. Like you could make yourself a four, but it wouldn't feel like a three day weekend if not everyone had it. So I need it to be like a federal thing. And I think it's best as a sweet treat. Of course you do, because you're literally like turning into the teacher we all hated. And that's right. I you prefer are. to be called Gen Z's big sister. Yeah, okay, keep talking like that. They're going to call you Gen Z's arch nemesis. No, Gen Z, we see each other. You wouldn't understand because you're just kind of like untethered to a generation. Not you coming for my <laughs> motherfucking neck, bitch. Coming for my I know. Age. I know how much that hurts you when you're told that you're not a part of Gen Z. But like, you know, I am. And I think it's so important for me to, you know, just humble you right now. Like, first of all, I don't even know like where you got the name Gen Z's big sister like I don't think anyone even calls you that um Maybe one check out did. I want check out my I want my dinner now's Instagram bio well let me tell you check it out that the reason maybe one person has said that is because of the influence you have on TikTok created by me so so you invented watch your me. mouth watch your motherfucking mouth okay? you invented me I literally created the Gen Z persona that you just kind of LARP well, why can't you do it for yourself then if you're so good at I it? I have. I have. And who are you? I have. Who are you to them? I am Gen Z's queen, okay? <laughs> queen. <laughs> Angela Bassett did the thing. Ugh, I'm so excited that this morning there's a really interesting array of stories, but one story that has captured my heart. Yeah. In the 11th hour, I didn't know about it until I woke up this morning, and I actually had like a lot of time to pick stories this morning, so I just did like a deep dive on the tweets about yeah. Ariana DeBose's BAFTA's opening monologue song rap. Um, yeah. And it was really something special to see. We're going to talk about it. We actually got a big show because not only do we have good stories, guys, especially we because- We have a big show. Because there was no show yesterday, we have a lot to catch up on. We also are going to do a major TV recap because over the weekend, Jackie and I both watched Summer House. Mm -hmm. I am all caught up on Real Housewives of New Jersey. I am all caught up on Vanderpump Rules. Oh, good. I haven't been watching. And um, your girl, Cloudy McClurd, McTurd, finally watched Dope Sick after Jackie, like, basically calling that I would watch it. And I really thought I wasn't gonna, but over the weekend, you know, me and Ben were looking for something. We ate that shit up. It was so good. So we're gonna do like a big TV recap You can recap do your dope stick recap now. Are you sure? Yeah, because that's like different from TV recap. This is just like culture recap. I mean, it was an amazing show. I wish it never had to be made, you know? Mm -hmm. It was so upsetting. And I've never been one to, you know, lobby against Big Pharma. And like when people were talking about Big Pharma, I was like, okay, I literally didn't even know what they were talking about. I'm like, yeah, Big Pharma. I was like, I never knew if like Big Pharma was good or bad. Like I didn't even know what people were talking about, but I know like it's a thing. The way 
if I ever see Richard Sackler in these streets, I'm literally going to stab him. Like, I am so involved now. I think I'm going to go lobby against Big Pharma. Like, wow. That's all I'll say. My my eyes were opened. This, I had obviously heard of like, you know, the West Virginia area, you know, Appalachia, they have a reputation for just kind of, you know, being full of drug addicts. And it's like, well, why? Why? And to learn how it all got started with these just truly evil, demonic people, not just one, obviously the Sacklers, but so many people made the opioid crisis possible, was so upsetting. And I had so many takeaways from the show. The first being that that young actress who plays Betsy, who was also in Booksmart, what's her name? I don't know, because she looks like someone else. And I always just think about that person that she looks like. But let me pull it up. Dope. Because she's a star. She's, I think, going to be one of the great actresses of our time. Caitlin Dever. <clears throat> Caitlin Dever, a lot of people know. I think her breakout role was, you know, Beanie Feldstein's sidekick in Booksmart, where she was great. It was, but then she was also in Unbelievable, which you watched. Yeah, oh my God, so good. Mm-hmm. I didn't watch that. Uh, she was in Dear Evan Hansen. Oh, yeah. She was in Bad Teacher, and she was. She was that little snot-nosed kid. Well, she was much younger. Was trying to get extra credit. She's incredible. Like, I think she will be like uh, a Kate Blanchett of our time. I think she has a very long career ahead of her. I think you mean Blanchett Kate. Yeah, I do mean Blanchett (laughs) Kate. Thank you um, for correcting me. She's incredible. She was amazing. Me and I cried so many times during the show. Michael Keaton was incredible. Peter Skarsgård showed up. Like, everyone. It was so good. It was so upsetting. Ugh. I, it's I, honestly I don't even know what else to say. It was it was I was deeply troubled and deeply moved by the whole the whole show. And I know a lot of the characters in that story, like they themselves did not exist, um, but their stories are like amalgamation. They're like of, composite characters. And apparently, yeah. the Michael Keaton character like is a is a real guy because it's I mean, based on a book. So there the, was a doctor who was like heavily addicted. I think he was taking like a hundred pills a day at one point prescribe heavily prescribing oxy and like i don't think he started as like this evil person no the doctor becoming an addict was something i so did not see coming and the second his car got hit i was like oh i thought that the uh the district attorney when he had the surgery for cancer i thought he was gonna get addicted like no it was it was so good i thought it really highlighted like not only the opioid crisis but just like how damaging addiction can be for like people's families and not just the person but it's like for every one person that's touched by addiction there's like 50 other people who they're you know related to who also are touched by it yeah um i thought the actress who played the mom was incredible oh my god she made me cry when like they when they opened the final episode with like all the protests that were taking um place like 10 years later like it's so crazy how literally the show started in 1998 and nothing actually really happened majorly in the culture until 2019. I was like, this is bullshit. Um, When she was at the Guggenheim protesting for her daughter, like I was just, I was sobbing. I was obsessed with her. It was, it was so good. You were right. I'm I'm a big dope. We know this. You're a dope Downton Abbey reading dope. Like I'm a dope. Um, It was incredible. And I, I cannot recommend it enough. I completely agree. I'm so glad that you feel that way. And Ben liked it too loved oh my god and you know he was just happy because usually we'll start a show together and then i'll finish it like when he's out golfing and he'll never he never finished uh house of the dragon he never finished uh so many i don't think he ever watched a game of thrones finale like so many good episodes like he just never finishes stuff so i think he was also just really excited to like finally see something through to be a part of something with you yeah and i relate to that well next you guys have to watch chernobyl yeah that's next on our list you absolutely have to also because it's very relevant to what's going on right now in the country like what we're experiencing well what's happening in like east palestine ohio Mm -hmm. is perhaps one of the biggest environmental disasters in our country's history and it's kind of like not being talked about and and they're definitely not getting the help that they need it's it's no really fucking weird it's so crazy and not that it's important at all but like it being called palestine palestine like who knew there was a place in america with that name, like I was, I when people were talking about it, I was like, oh great, like more, you know, trouble in the Middle East. And then honestly, I don't even think I read a bunch of the headlines because I was like, honestly, I can't. Like I can't, it's such a, tr- <laughs> it's such a troubling region. Like I need to protect my, my mental health. Um, and then 
but someone was like, it's in Ohio. I'm like, excuse me? It's like Paris, Texas. It's just, honestly, I know that has nothing, like there's so much going on and I hate to like, but I was shook, honestly. Yeah, um, but it's also pronounced Palestine there. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. So, um, but it's spelled the same. So when you're reading headlines, you don't know it's Palestine. No, the first Palestine. time I saw it, I was like, what is this? chemical exposure in Ohio have anything to do with what's going on with the Middle, in the Middle East. East like apples and oranges and then I understood and I was like oh okay yeah no it's really sad so sending lots of love to all of our Ohio toasters and people affected in the region not just Ohio no and it's like a lot of people are going to be affected in the region that's the whole point of like right why the water we need to clean it up the water the farms the animals the people the air like it's terrible 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 um, so yes, Chernobyl is quite relevant. That is next on my list. Um, but all in all, it was an eye-opening weekend watching Dope Sick. Like, Big Pharma, I've got my eye on you. Yeah. Love that for you. Keeping one yeah. eye open for Big Pharma. I'm keeping an eye out. And you know, Purdue is like still like, you know, they're still like a company. Yeah, but I feel like I don't, when you think about like the big names in pharma. Pfizer, Moderna. You know, their AstraZeneca. I feel like their time has passed, you know? No, and I hope, you know, that was a lesson to all. Yeah. In, in the pharma space. I know it, it was not. And no, they still, not, they I, still like, do, are they still pull the same shit. Like those pain charts are still in every hospital. Like, am I a two year old? Can I just tell you I'm in pain? I don't have to no. rate it on a scale with an angry 100%. face. 100%. And for me, what was so crazy was, you know, they were visiting doctors in jail who had overprescribed medication. And it's like, OK, so these doctors are in jail, but like nobody who created the medication is. Right. And the people who are like the pushing top. it and selling to the doctors and the doctors like are trying to do their job and help people. They're, they didn't seek out harm. No, 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 totally. It was just it was really. But the doctors was, trust the FDA and they trust these organizations that are oh. put in place to make sure that we have like a functioning healthcare system. Let me tell you. Thank you for bringing up the motherfuckers at the FDA. I'm keeping an eye out for them too. And if I ever see Curtis Wilson on the street, it's fucking over for him. Damn. Like, I'm pissed. Yeah. That's where I think, like, the biggest disappointment lies because, like, those agencies are, are put in place to, like, protect people, keep people healthy, no. keep people safe, and to look out for, like, the big bad pharma people. And to protect the average person. I find that more often than not when I watch documentaries about like major scandals or major crimes more often than not like there was a a, a federal agency involved and 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 contacted and never not once does that job does that uh agency actually do their job whether it's child services whether it's the FDA whether it's the Department of Health like they're always like on there's always like a paper trail oh yeah they knew about this in 1992 and they never do anything so yeah. you know what this is what I have to say to the government bitch yeah. And in case you're listening as a podcast, I'm holding up both my fingers. The middle ones. The middle ones. So it was eye-opening. Thanks, Jax, for opening my eyes to all the corruption. It was, it was fucking depressing. And, it was. The way it and was watching, filmed, there was something about it that just, like, sucks you in. No, and ugh, it was just... Ugh. It's one of those shows like I try to stay away from because it really does like affect your mental health. It's, it's so sad, but it, you can't ignore reality. No, you can't. And that... Um, that guy, he, I think his name is John Brown. He was the the district attorney, not the assistant who like did all the research, but the guy who like the older guy who took yeah. the ball I'm, all the way down the field, who like really yeah. rallied for them. Like, what a guy! It was just like no. intent on making waves. No, let, let's also talk about that scene where they get called to the attorney general's office. I believe his name is James Comey, and they think it's about Purdue Chicken. Was that real? It had to have been because that's insane to make up. And then like all the people in government who are like blocking the the indictment. What the fuck are we fucking voting for these fucking morons for? Like do your motherfucking job, bitch. Why are you going to become a politician just to be an asswipe? OK, everyone, well, because they get everyone. Like, they get the money for their campaign from the pharmaceutical companies. They couldn't have yeah. won without that money. And then yeah. when they get into office, it becomes their job to grease the wheels and make it easier for them. That's what I've learned, you know, and I knew that. But to really see it played out. People in government, people in politics are so motherfucking unscrupled. Literal little shits. I hate them all. Yeah. Every single one. Damn. 
yeah so that's my dope sick recap we have more tv recap at the end of the show all more bravo light, tings you know, bravo tings i also watched american idol on sunday because like why the fuck not such a good show i know like nobody actually comes from there anymore except maybe gabby barrett but i i had heard she was like you know tied to luke bryan prior so she was always going to be a star um and it's really just like a talent show and it's fun to watch and it's really so good i don't know why they like the people who sit down to edit the footage are like, okay, how can we make America cry? Like, they're just, they, oh, someone comes in, oh, you have a good singing voice? Tell me about your childhood trauma. Like, they yeah. have to LARP on that, harp on that. <laughs> um, but it was so good. Me and Ben were sobbing. That guy from Hawaii, oh my God. And then the guy who sang Billy Joel, if you watch, so good. That's emotional. It, it's so emotional. I remember as a kid, they were always making us cry too. Yeah. Like, why? You get more invested in the people and their journey, and it just means yeah. more when you know something about them. Yeah, I mean, I can't talk about crying on American Idol without talking about piece by piece, you know? No, you couldn't. You but can add to a list of my, my favorite stories as well. Kelly Clarkson, Nine Months Pregnant, singing piece by piece. A really beautiful song about her father abandoning her. Um, performing it, you know, for the umpteenth time. It wasn't the first time she performed it, but something about being back at American Idol and performing on that stage and being pregnant. She sobbed through the whole thing and Keith Urban sitting there sobbing, Harry Connick Jr., J-Lo. It's a beautiful moment. I, I could watch that clip and I do on a weekly basis. It comes up on my TikTok at least once a week. I love that for you. But then you're crying once a week. Um, That's the case, I think, usually, you know. I'm sorry, Turdy. No, no, I mean, like, I'm always seeing shit online that's making me cry. Military re reunions. reunions. Oh, asking my stepdad to adopt me. Oh, my God, those ones really fucking get me. Children hearing for the first Children time. Children seeing for the first time. Oh, my God, those ones really fucking get to me. Always tag me in those. Oh, man, have you seen the one of the girl and the man who are getting married? And he turns around for, like, the big reveal, and she gives him a present. And it's those really expensive glasses. If you're colorblind, you can wear them, and you can see normally. And she hands him to him and he's like oh my god you got me these like they're so and and he puts them on and they're standing outside in this like beautiful hilled like lavender field and he just looks at her and he looks around he's like oh my god you guys see this every day and then I'm literally gonna start crying talking about it and he's like you look so beautiful it's literally I I see it all the time it's one of my most favorite viral videos never crying, seen oh it did oh it my, make, what it hasn't made it to reels oh yeah you gotta see it I'll send it to you next time it comes across my my desk damn I love viral shit like that. Oh, my God. Oh. It's nice. It's beautiful. Turdy, that's beautiful. It is. And what else is beautiful? The toast. And that's the, the best you're going to get from me in terms of a segue today. Yes. So I think without further ado. Oh, no. No. No, big announcement. Big announcement. It's that time of the month, y'all. Today. Well, it is that time of the month. <laughs> I do have my period. Um. <laughs> But today is also uh, a gorgeous day because Jackie and I today at 5 p.m. Eastern time are going to do another episode of Freaking Fred. So it is our YouTube live episode that we do, we're trying to do once a month for our so Patreon. So far we're on track. We're two for two, bitch. Well, let's see how tonight goes. No, we'll still do it. We're, no, but like, what if the Wi-Fi is out? Don't jinx it. Oh my God. Okay. Like, sure. Not you being negative. Um... <laughs> Our YouTube live episodes we do uh, once a month. They're really fun. We play lots of games. People can tune in live. You can join the chat. It's really fun. If you guys remember, we used to do an audio version on Spotify Live. Now we're doing video and audio on YouTube Live. So you have to be a Patreon member to gain access. It's 5 p.m. Eastern time. If you're not a Patreon member, that's totally fine. You have until like 4.55 tonight to become a Patreon member. The link will be in Patreon. You could join live. If you can't join live, you still can watch it uh, later on. It'll be about an hour. And it's super fun. It's just like an evening with your girlies. You know, you can cocktail it up. An evening with Jackson Turd. An evening with Jackson Turd. So I'm excited for that. Uh, Me too. But before we do that, we have to yeah. do this. Yeah. Which is the fast five stories that you need to know. Period. 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 Like, that's it. Yeah, no. That's it. That's what you need to know. Oh, and the three TV recaps you should know as well. And it's the three TV recaps and fast five stories that you need to know that are brought to you by Liquid IV. If you're trying to improve your health, hydration is a great place to start. And Liquid IV is the hydration brand that fuels your well-being. By the way, Liquid IV came in clutch for me this weekend. I went out hard on Friday. Did um, you? Yeah. And when I got home, I chugged a Liquid IV before bed. And when I woke up and I had one, and it made an enormous difference. It's just like, it, I use it for hangovers and hydration, but, you know, a little life hack for hangovers. Um... 
So the hydration multiplier from Liquid IV is one of the products that you are missing out in your daily routine. In just one stick, you'll get five essential vitamins and two times faster hydration than just water alone. Use it first thing in the morning, before a workout, when you're feeling run down, after a long night out, on a long flight. There's so many times where like your overall wellness is just like not it because you're probably dehydrated. You're having like a deficiency of some sort and drinking water with liquid IV is just gonna make that water do more for you. Get your vitamins, get your hydration. So in the stick of liquid IV, pour it into 16 ounces of water and you're gonna get vitamin B3, B5, B6, B12, vitamin C. You'll have three times the electrolytes of a traditional sports drink. It has premium ingredients. It's it's non-GMO, it's free from gluten, dairy, and soy, and it's gonna hydrate you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. Liquid IV is also a great brand to support because they're on a mission to change the world. To date, Liquid IV has donated over 36 million servings in over 50 countries around the world. Liquid IV is just something you always need to have in your house because when you need it and you don't have it, you'll be kicking yourself. I have like three different flavors. They have really good flavors too. They're all really good. Just keep a couple tubes in your purse, in your office desk, if you show up hungover to work, you had a migraine, just make sure to always have it on you, okay? You can grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com. Use code TOAST at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code TOAST at liquidiv.com. Thank you, Turdy. You're welcome. Our first story... In defense of Ariana DeBose's rap, BAFTA producer slams Twitter criti- Twitter criticism as incredibly unfair, claims everybody loved it. BAFTA's sure. awards producer Nick Bullen believes Twitter's criticism of Ariana DeBose's opening number at Sunday's award show was incredibly unfair. So the BAFTAs took place this weekend. Ariana DeBose opened the show with a musical number that... Uh, First, she belted out, sisters are doing it for themselves, we are family, and she transitioned into an original rap that saluted the award's female nominees. Now, um, no description of it will do it justice. You should watch it for yourself. You, you just, it's something you have to see. And But I do have a transcription of the rap lyrics. So do I. Angela Bassett did the thing. Viola Davis, my woman king. Blanchett, Kate, you're a genius. Jamie Lee, you are all of us. No, she went like this. Jamie Lee, you are all of us. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's all they gave me. There was more. Oh, there was more. She basically called, uh, like, uh, added to Armas, you were great and blonde. Yeah. Like she, no, she honestly, shouted out all of the female nominees. And also, yeah. there was more that began. But, like, it's that Angela Bassett did the thing part that really has people in a tizzy. Um, yeah. For me, the first time I saw it... I when I first watched it I didn't know if it was going viral because it was good or bad so I was watching it thinking it was good and like Mm -hmm. it was because like Liz Hype posted it like without comment she was like this is going viral for obvious reasons and I was like oh because she like what are the reasons I I thought it was because like she hosted the BAFTAs like she gave it her all she sang she danced she rapped and I'm watching it and I'm like people think this is good like this is turn she's so out of breath (laughs) <laughs> She's out of breath. The rap was actually like really poorly written. Like I thought the rhymes and like the iambic pentameter was super off. It was, yeah. like, it was actually bothering me. The video I watched had the lyrics over it. But if it didn't, I'm not sure I would have yes. known who she was talking about. And they pan to everyone she's talking about as she's talking about them. And they give like a look. They have no idea she's talking. Some of them have no idea she's yeah. talking about them because it's unclear what she's saying. Like Because she's like running through it. And she's, she's dancing like, you can't really so hear hard. Her. She's doing the <laughs> most. And it's like, that would have been a time. She's like running through the stage. It's like, that would have been a time to just like focus on the rap. Now, I want to talk about the producer who stepped forward. Oh, wait, I want to, I just want to tell you what he said. Okay. He spoke to her. Because honestly, I didn't know this man before. And now that I do know him, I just want everyone to know like how little respect I have for him. He spoke to the Variety uh, the morning after the telecast and shared that the West Side Story star put the whole piece together with her team working closely with the musical director and choreographer and didn't deserve the vitriol. Ariana DeBose and her backup dancers burst onto the stage following host Richard E. Grant's opening monologue. They sang, they rapped. However, the song immediately received backlash online from viewers who branded it as painful to watch. Bullen said... Um, um, the trolling is incredibly unfair, to be frank. Quote, we wanted to open the show with some energy, some fun, and also lay out straight away that this was hopefully going to feel like a different night, but with a familiarity as well. And what Ariana did was exactly that. I think a lot of people don't like change. And there's a view that the BAFTAs have to be this slightly stiff, traditional British middle England messaging, but American awards shows have much more razzmatazz, oh, much God. more showbiz, and perhaps a broader range of people being involved. We were not we felt we're not about revolution, we're about evolution. 
Oh, I didn't even realize that like that was their way of competing with America. Okay, better luck next year, BAFTAs. Um, but I kind of like hated how he opened his statement with just being like, Ariana and her team did it all. It's like, sir, like he just wanted to wash his hands of it. Like, I didn't do this. You're the, like, you had to approve it. Like, you are in charge of the show. So, like, you bear responsibility as well. You can't just, like, dump it all on Ariana. Okay? Like, mm -hmm. fuck off. I did not like that. Um, and now learning that, like, them opening with, like, a, that was, like, their way of LARPing as Americans. Like, now I, like, now I hate it even more. No, and they're, like, trying to tell us that we didn't like it because it wasn't British enough. But I'm watching this, like, as an American with American standards yeah. and it's not it. And I actually felt like the audience was really um, kind. You know, everyone's like, smiling, clapping. Yeah. I don't feel like they they were against it because it was British. I think they were against it because like it wasn't really amazing. And I think when you want to do something like that, like it has to be amazing or else it's just kind of a flop. Yeah, and I also think using the term backlash is like a little strong here. It's not backlash people aren't you know calling for her to be you know r removed from all of her future films they're for the I would say 99.9% .9 of the shit I've seen is like funny playful meme culture yeah it's pretty harmless I don't think Ariana should feel bad she didn't do anything wrong you know she put herself out there and it didn't work out yeah she de deactivated her Twitter by the way so I don't right, think she's taking this well I know and it's like Part of me is like, yeah, people are so mean. But also part of me is like, this is par for the course when you become a major, major star. And it, I feel like it happened really fast for Ariana DeBose. Like last year was kind of her first year on the scene. I'm sh I know she's been like working for many years. But, you know, she did the award show circuit last year. And now she's like a part of it. Um, and being poked fun at in like in a really kind of harmless way is the culture. Um and I feel sad that she deactivated her Twitter. I think more often than not, like, you're going to win over the public by, like, getting in on the fun, Leah Michelle. Um, so this just kind of went sideways in every single way possible. Yeah, I don't think anyone ever expected that, even if it wasn't good, that there would just be this much harmony in how bad it was, you know? Like, yeah. that, And that even, like, that a moment like this would go viral when it's just, like, kind of random and... It could have just been like, oh, that was weird, and we all move on. But like the yeah, clips weird just shit like, happens all the time. Yeah, like because it, it's not like it was a train wreck. It was just right, like, not like she fell on her face, right? Like she, it was just not perfect. No, just conceptually, like the whole concept was weird. It was poorly executed. Um, it was cringe, like the dance moves and other people's reactions. Because every time their name was said, we saw their face. Like they felt weird too. It was like a collective weird moment for us all to experience. Yeah. Yes, it was. And also, like, that, we say this all the time, like, hosting, or she wasn't the it's host. It's the worst she, job. It's, an, a, it's a thankless job. Every single person who does it, who's responsible for a monologue or whatever, like, gets roasted. Yep. And yep. this, like, yeah. So, um, I hope she is able to make light Come of back. it. And, and be okay. Like, because I don't think it's, like, anything that bad. It's not right, career it's not, ending. It's just, it's just... It didn't go her deep. way. It didn't go her if, way. If, if I could speak to Ariana, I would just like remind her it's not that deep. Like you don't do anything bad or wrong. Like it's just like a little embarrassing, but like a great way to bounce back from something like this is always to get in on the fun. Like she should recreate the TikTok, like, you know, and use the voiceover and do the dance. Like get in on the fun. That's how you come out on top of situations like this. When you like take it so serious and you like hide, it, it it's not a good way to handle PR things like this. Just take her power back. She needs to do the shoulder dance move that's going viral. Angela Bassett did the thing. That's what she needs to do. Like, get in on the fun, girlfriend. It's not that deep. No, it's not that deep. But um, the Baptists did take place this weekend. William and Kate were in attendance. Yeah. Being, like, really fucking cute. And yeah, I know. She tapped his ass. She tapped his, but they were very chummy for them. Yeah, for them. I mean, the Baptists, I feel like, is, like, a glamorous, kind of less royal, more relaxed environment they looked beautiful everyone was you know guffawing over kate our environmental you know queen not gonna waste a single resource wearing earrings from zara and a dress she wore many years ago that she had like re purpose you know a, a seamstress came in added a little cape they modernized it more with the times more on trend she wore the black gloves she looked beautiful they looked great they never really step out in non-royal events that are like more pop culture-y. I think it's maybe once or twice a year. Yeah. And it was fabulous to see it. I loved it. Yeah, they hadn't been to the Baptist since before COVID. And we needed that from them. We needed that from them. And I think they them. needed that too. Even though they just gave us those moments in Boston. 
Yeah, no, they've kind of been doing it a lot. They also weirdly went to um, a while ago, but it was like this year, well, last year. James Bond? The, no, the other one. Um, Top Gun. They did a Top Gun ah, yeah, premiere, yeah, yeah. like oh, an yeah. international one. Yeah, and who was it that met? Was it Miles Teller who was like so excited to meet him? They, I think they all were. Yeah, and they did James, they go to James Bond premiere. Yeah, He's like they're killing treasure. it. They're killing it. I think they've like really realized how they need to step up their game in terms of like pop culture moments on a global scale because like they're you know there's this machine against them now harry i mean harry and megan yeah excuse me um and they've like just pretty much like not fought back and that's the royal way but i think they're them stepping out like hobnobbing with glamorous people very the same people that like harry and megan are up like in that circle now like the hollywood elites um I think it's their way of like entering the conversation. Yeah, but they also can't be seen to do too much of that because then it yeah. starts to like be weird. They'll start going to like, you know, the opening of an envelope. So I think right now the amount that they're doing is really perfect. They're giving us a lot of moments, but it doesn't feel not royal. Agreed. It doesn't feel like common. Common. Oh, yikes. Yeah. Um, the BAFTAs looked lovely. You know, a lot of... Uh, a-listers really showing up and showing out. I think that's like a really well-respected award risk if you're like an artist actor. Mm -hmm. um, and it spurred some rumors. I, it, it's from Dumois. So like, again, you have to take everything with half a grain of salt. But there are rumors that Lily James, who was, you know, the BAFTA's girly, she was at all the after parties, and Matt Smith have gotten back together. I didn't, I didn't even really like know that she had dated him until I became obsessed with him as Damon from uh, House of the Dragon. But apparently they were together for many, many years and there are rumors circulating that they've started to date again, which is like so BAFTAs, you know, it's like so British. I love that for them. I hope it's true. Me too. Like I, like I will like, if, if there is a ship to ha be had, like I will, I will get on, like I will do the manual labor in building it. Like I will, I will go to Home Depot. If you build it, they will come, Turdy. Right. That's, that's what we're doing. We're building it. Okay. Well, speaking of ships and maybe new relationships, our next story, Avril Lavigne is seen hugging it out with Tyga after dinner at Nobu. Avril so Lavigne weird. and Tyga have been getting really comfortable around each other, evidenced in new pics after they shared a meal at one of LA's most famous celeb hotspots. Tyga, Avril, and a few others grabbed dinner at Nobu Sunday night, where we're told they seem to be hitting it off. The two hugged it out after dinner in the parking lot as if to say goodbye, but then left together in the same car. Hmm. We've spoken to Maybe they live in the same area. TMZ spoke to sources close to both Avril and Tyga who say they've been hanging out together a lot lately, though it's unclear if things are romantic. This is I mean, this is so fucking random. Yeah. Okay, if you had to bet, do you think it's romantic or just like they have mutual friends, they were at a group dinner and they shared right. a so ride? It's important to note it was a group dinner and that changes everything. But I also um, feel like when you're a celebrity, one, they like to like bring their people with them. Yes. Two, they like to like buffer engagements, yeah. you know, because it's like kind of an immature thing, I feel like, you know. Yes. Um. So, and they were at Nobu, so maybe like they knew they would be spotted, but I do feel like sometimes people go to Nobu, even though they know they're going to get spotted, it's like, it's a great meal. I don't care. Yeah, I mean, both of their reps responding to TMZ and saying they've been hanging out. Like, this whole thing gives, like, a no. little bit of, like, a thirsty moment. So they spoke to sources close, so it's not, like, reps putting out oh, a statement. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you for, that's, that's very different. Okay. Um, I would say, yeah, like, I would say they're, like, giving it a shot, you know? Yeah. Like, when I look at who Tyga has dated in the past, Avril would not fall into the category of his type. And when I look at who Avril has dated in the past, Tyga wouldn't fall into the category of her type either. She's like very like rocker. Yeah. And he's and he's very like, you know, Instagram model. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe they're going into business together. Maybe. I feel like they could be ch chatting. I mean, it's just so random. That's why I'm like having a hard time seeing it. Like these are two people I would have thought probably don't even know each other. Like but don't even know her, each other's names. Her like she, her type is always different. Like she was engaged to Mod Son. She was dating Brody Jenner forever. Like the two of them have nothing in common. Yeah. I think she likes musicians. Yeah. Tyga. I could see it. Like I wouldn't have predicted it. I could you see know, it. I guess I could see it. Yeah. It's just an odd pairing. Two people from like, in my in my mind, like two different ends of the earth. Yeah. Like, I don't but even know what Tyga kind of my really favorite does. Couples. Yeah, that's true. It's always the unexpected ones. Yeah. And I feel like when they have enough not 
in common, it's a good recipe. It's, you know, it's not too yeah. close for comfort like Kelsey and Morgan Evans. Like, yeah. you do your punk rock thing. You do your rap thing. And like, I'll see you for dinner. And we'll meet, we'll meet at home. And you'll tell me about what's going on in your business because I have no fucking clue. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right about that. Like, it, they always say opposites attract. So... I guess we'll just have to wait and see. This might just be like a one-time thing that we like never hear about again. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. It being a one-time thing that we literally never hear Why about Why are you again. laughing? And then like, I could see us in a few years being like, oh, remember when Tyga and Avril was potted together? And we'll be like, that never happened. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I mean, I'll forget about this. If I never hear about this again, like I will forget about this. Yeah. It's so random. But you know what? Like if, if there's a relationship there, like I'm open to exploring. Yeah, I'm trying to see what she's wearing. If it's like a date outfit. She, good question it's an oversized hoodie as a dress but her hair is she's done. like she's like rocker chick you know like they don't b- believe in the glam yeah no she looks cool could be a date could be a date yeah like her wearing a hoodie as a dress is like you know uh, you wearing a pantsuit like it's it's fancy for you <laughs> you know yeah sure she's not like other girls no she's not so he drove and she's in the passenger seat and I heard that Angela Bassett did the thing. I heard that too. Viola Davis, my woman king. <laughs> it's kind of, actually like the more I hear it, the more I'm actually impressed by the lyricism. Yeah. Rhyming thing and king, genius. Dr. Seuss could never. My woman king. I can't stop, like for real. Yeah. No, you guys have to watch it for yourself. It's just... It's all over TikTok. Just search like Ariana DeBose, search Viola Davis, search Angela Bassett. If it wasn't like going viral and I wasn't seeing the clip over and over again, like, and I just wa- saw it once when I was watching the Baptist was live, like I really wouldn't have thought about it again, which is why it's no. so, it just like sticks with you because it's like, you keep seeing it. Like everybody had the same thought. Yeah, like this is weird. <laughs> this is odd. Just a little chaotic. Just a little chaotic. A little too much chaos. Amen. And the more you watch it, you like discover new things about it. It's very exciting. Yeah, especially it's not like if you watch the performance as a whole, like the song, the songs that it's sandwiched between, you know, because there's like a lot. And if you watch a performance as a whole and like every time you watch it, you focus on a different audience member's reaction. I mean, you could be there for hours. Yeah. Yeah. It should be studied. No, someone wrote a really funny tweet. Like, I want to spend 12 hours studying every audience um, member and put together a presentation. There'll be one hour as to why she didn't just say Kate Blanchett. Blanchett Kate why did she like why those lyrics I don't know because it's not like it needed to rhyme it's right it has the beginning the of the sentence of syllables Blanchett Kate I'm obsessed <laughs> Ariana DeBose like literally for president I love her <laughs> like it takes such balls to get up there and like just do any type of performance in front of that crowd but to do such a like a bad performance honestly you have my unwavering respect but I just want to say like I do like the idea I feel like over the years people have done like a musical monologue Kelly Kelly at the Kelly BBMAs. I saw um someone posted a clip of Aubrey Plaza hosting like the independent film critics yeah. award like she did like a little cabaret something I've seen it uh and they said like this is what Ariana DeBose was trying to do and I watched it I, I enjoyed it it wasn't even like amazing but it was just good and she made funny yeah. jokes and it was good like whatever um I think Hugh Jackman did one once like I love the concept yeah but it's gotta be sharp the execute it's all in the execution yeah And this one fell flat, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it too. And I just hope that she's okay because it's not that serious. And I know I don't want her to like, you know, be like, be be like depressed. Yeah. 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 Um, Our next story, hoping for some good execution because my big fat Greek wedding three (gasps) gets a September premiere date and a first cast photo. Obsessed. And the cast photo, by the way, look at the background. Where do they look like they are? They're in Greece. Greek. The Portocalis family is back. Focus featured shared the first cast photo from the upcoming comedy, My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3, for which the cast of the first two films have reunited, announcing the third installment will premiere in theaters worldwide on September 8th. Oh, that's pretty close. Like, not terrible. Not terrible. Also, star Nia Vardalos, who plays Tula, is Mm -hmm. directing and writing the movie as well. So um, it's going to be exciting. Their daughter, Paris... Yeah. Is in the movie. And a newcomer, Elias Kakavas, I feel like that's her boyfriend because he looks to be her age. Yeah. And I wonder if they're getting married. 
you know, every every movie has to have a wedding. Last year so was true. the parents. And Elias Kakavas, like, I think is Greek. So then she would be... They're getting maybe married in Greece. Yeah, and she would be Paris Kakavas. Because it's funny that her name is Paris Miller and, like, she's a part of this big Greek she's family. She's the daughter of Ian Miller. Ian Miller. Um, Wait, let me I, tell you how, like... Where's the dad? Who's dad? Tula's dad. Tula. Oh, was he not in the picture? He's not in the picture. Let me. Okay, wait. I don't want to be morbid. I know. I know. I'm, 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 I'm going to go look it up. Oh, my God. Let me tell you how I'm not seeing the movie. I mean, I am, obviously. But if the dad, like, name a greater character in any film. Michael Constantine passed away <gasps> August 2021. Oh, my God. I'm so upset. Oh, my God. I'm so upset. I'm like, I actually feel like I'm going to cry. I'm like really emotional because I'm like on my period. But like when I tell you, like I can't name an actor who's had a bigger impact on my life. Like I'm being dead serious. I'm so upset. Well, if it makes you feel better, he died at 94 from natural causes. Oh, 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 oh. I didn't realize he was that old. Yeah. Oh. The movie well, will not be the same. I am heartbroken. Heartbroken. They are no. I was, I mean, I was just going to say, I, I do think the movie won't be the same without him. I do think it'll still be good. Um, and I feel like with franchises like this, I, every time there's a new sequel, like everyone like rolls their eyes. But let me tell you how the second movie was so fucking funny and so good that I'm not worried in the slightest about like another film kind of like, you know, ruining the legacy. It is, and I feel like a good amount of time has passed since number two. I mean, the time the time between one and two was so much. I think maybe it was even like 10 years, and now two and three is probably like five. But I feel like we got enough time. I recently just watched both of them. Like, they're so good. I'm so, I'm excited. I'm, I'm heartbroken to have just learned this news, like for real. I'm sorry to have sprung it on you with such good news. Yeah, no, and I figured, you know, not, with sequels like this, when you have, a, like, a family and there's characters of all different ages, the more movies you make, you know, the older characters are not likely going to be around for all of them. And I figured, you know, first to go would be their grandma, who's always running around thinking she's still in Greece. Right. Um, and I'm, I believe she has passed away. I just, so I was, I was coming to terms with that, not the dad. Yeah. No, I understand. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm glad John Corbett is showing up and showing out like our loyal guy. One thing about John Corbett, like he's going to show up for work. He's you know? available to work. He should be in the new Yellowstone. Um, he should. Oh my God. That's actually a really good call. Do you see the pictures going around of Carrie yeah, and Aiden smooching? Yeah. yeah. Spoiler alert. Except that I feel like there's a chance that they put out those pictures to throw people off from the storyline because they do that sometimes with Sex in the City. Yeah. No, the... The way that Sex in the City and what's so great about it is that they film in the streets of New York is like everything gets spoiled. It's so annoying. But this wasn't a spoiled fan photo. This was a photo that production put out. I thought it was like a paparazzi photo. No, I thought it was like straight from the camera. No, oh, no, no. I, I believe it was paparazzi photos. No. Yeah, when they film on the street, it's like a huge circus and paparazzi fans, people show up. Hold on. I've seen so much footage of like of the moment of them walking in the street on TikTok, like just from passerbyers. Oh, really? Well, just like yeah. that Instagram, like posted like a carousel of them. Oh, no, I'm oh, not oh, subscribing. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that's different. That's different. I'm not subscribing to Vogue. So maybe they did put it out. Oh, leave me alone. Yeah. And just like that sparks backlash with from Sex and City fans who are seriously not on board up with Carrie getting back together with Big. I mean, Carrie can do whatever she wants. Like, Aiden, have some scruples. Like, not only did this bitch cheat on you once, she left you at the altar. Like, my God. She ran away from you in Abu Dhabi. Like, my God. No, I know. And, and I now, just, oh, the other guy had to die. I know. For her and, and like, he's you. just always the runner up. And I just feel yeah. like it also, like, invalidates Carrie and Big's relationship because it's like, yeah. was she thinking about Aiden the whole time? Like, oh, he's just like waiting for her Aiden era. Yep. So, such a good call. So that's hurtful. And at least he has Tula, who will always love him and always be there for him. Okay, I forgot what we were talking about. I'm like, how do we start talking about this? Um, yes, John Corbett always shows up for work. I also feel like John Corbett is a, like a really good level of fame. Yeah. Like, he has been working pretty consistently on like very high profile, probably well-paying gigs, but he's not, you know, hounded by paparazzi. He has a really happy, stable marriage. No, like, and like he's not always like on the late night shows, you know, doing yeah. the circuit, like thirsting out. Like he does his projects. He probably does, you know, the, the red the press carpet, junkets. the press junket. And that's enough for him dying now. 
Yeah, and he also is like married to Bo Derek, and like she has like really historical, famous connections. Like he I is. Was just, yes. Did you watch Shania Twain's documentary? No. Okay, hold on. I want to get this thing right because Bo Derek okay, was like, in it. it. It's familiar that he's married to Bo Derek, but not something I would have been able to recall. Wait, I'm obsessed. I gotta look at pics. So she was in the Shania documentary because her. Um, one of her ex-men, I, I'm just, I'm botching this story. Give me a okay. second. Shania Twain. Not John Cusack. What's his name? John Corbett. Thank you. But they're so um, similar. Yeah. Like, why is nothing coming up? So. Uh, okay, I'm botching this. Oh my God, this. I'm obsessed beyond. I know, they're really cute. They're so cute. Okay, I don't remember exactly what the thing was, but all I'm saying is like Bo Derek is like an iconic Hollywood actress with like deep ties to old Hollywood. So John Corbett runs in fabulous circles. He probably makes a lot of money. He's on huge pl- projects, but he has like a fairly normal life, I have to assume. No, the That's way like a I'm good obsessed. level of fame with him and Bo Derek. Yeah. No, it's so cute. They've been together for a long time. Age Decades. appropriate. Age, Age appropriate. appropriate. We stand John Corbett in this house. And he's in hes in so many of my favorite... Uh, hello, Raising Helen. I know. Let me even go to his IMDb. Like, it's our cup run. Over. Raise your voice. Raise your voice. Um, he's Pastor Dan in Raising Helen. Of course, Aiden from Sex and the City. Uh, he's really got, like, good taste to all the boys I've loved before. Oh, the dad. The, the you know, very supportive girl dad. Obsessed. Um, Ramona and Beezus. Never saw it. <laughs> Uh, he's got a really good catalog. Yeah, he really, really does. And he's had an illustrious long career. Like, I'm happy for him. But in terms of the storyline of, like, him and Carrie, I'm not here for it. But I love that he always shows up no matter, you know, he's, you know, big on top. He's back in, in Sex in the City. And he still shows up for the third. That's a stand-up guy. Still shows up for the third My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Yeah. Oh, my God. But I feel like I would love to know from him, like, what his favorite projects are. Like, does he get more excited about Sex and the City being rebooted or Big Fat Greek Wedding 3? You know what? Add him to the list. That's somebody I would love to have on the podcast, honestly. Like, I don't dream. Like, I feel like it's actually kind of attainable. I feel like I'm just putting it out into the universe. But as we literally just stated, he doesn't do dream guests. Okay. John John Corbett. Corbett. It's a good list we got going. Yeah. It's random too. It's not like what everyone would think. No, you know? it's like not like Kim, Kim Kardashian. Kyle, of course, no. of course. She's actually not on the list because like that's obvious. It's so obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People would like, love to chit chat with. Yeah, I have a lot of questions for John Corbett. Yeah, and perhaps he has a lot of answers for Claudia Ashray. Perhaps. Are you ready for our next story? If it's the next story, that's brought to you by Bowl and Branch. Yes, it is, Turdy. So Bowl and Branch is making sure we're staying cozy all winter long. Do it with a set of their buttery soft sheets from Bowl & Branch. They're made with 100% organic cotton threads. They get softer with every wash. So however you're spending the winter spending the winter season, make sure you're getting your best sleep with a set of buttery soft sheets from Bowl & Branch. So as you guys know, Jackie and I have preached the good word of Bowl & Branch for many years now. Our entire homes are lathered in Bowl & Branch buttery soft sheets. We both have the signature hemmed sheet collection from Bowl and Branch. I have it in my master bedroom. You have it in my guest room, in your bedroom, in all the bedrooms in your Smitch's house. Smitch's room. My room as well. Um, they come in all different colors. We both have it in white and they also come in all different bed sizes from twin up to California King. So they use the highest quality threads on earth. Their sheets are made sheets are made from slow grown organic cotton so they have a superior softness and they give a better night's sleep they feel buttery to the touch they are super breathable so they're perfect for both the cooler and the warmer months they're loved by millions of sleepers they're so luxurious they've been loved by three u.s presidents and two peabody award-winning morning show hosts They're designed for all sleepers. They're made without toxins. They're free from pesticides, from formaldehyde, and other harsh chemicals. They fit the deepest of mattresses, and they are labeled with top and bottom tags, so making your bed is easier than ever. Make the most out of bedtime with the Bowl & Branch sheets. Get 15% off your first order when you use promo code TOAST at bowlandbranch.com. Exclusions apply. See site for details. That's Boland Branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, branch.com, promo code TOAST. Today's episode is also brought to you by Squarespace. 
So Squarespace's tools are really everything of the sort, everything that you need if you are getting a website up and running for your side hustle, for your business, you work in e-commerce. Um, Squarespace is fabulous from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. So whatever your business's needs are, um, Squarespace has something for you. You don't need to be a software engineer, a website builder to make something really beautiful on Squarespace. It's not difficult. It's really easy to use. They have beautiful templates. I have built websites, different blogs over the years. And I have to say, Squarespace is a fabulous experience. Um, so e-commerce is the place. Uh, Squarespace is the space to sell anything if you're into e-commerce. They have the tools you need to get your business off the ground, including e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, secure payments. Whatever you sell, Squarespace has merchandising features to make your products look their best online. You can connect your social media accounts to your website. You can get traffic overviews of your website. You also own your content. Um, they offer a one-click data portability. So check out squarespace.com slash toast for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code toast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Again, that's squarespace.com slash toast for the free trial. And then once you're ready to launch, use the offer code toast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. They will help you from anything you want to secure, you know, whatever website domain you want. They can do everything for you. It's so easy. Check out squarespace.com slash toast. Thank you, Turdy. You're welcome. Our next story, Alec Baldwin faces reduced prison sentence after one of his charges has been dropped in the fatal Rust shooting. So Alec Baldwin has got the gun enhancements charge dropped in the Rust case. The Santa Fe District Attorney's Office announced Monday it's dropping the gun enhancement charge against Alec Baldwin, a crime that would have carried a five-year sentence if convicted. However, he still faces a charge of involuntary manslaughter for the shooting, which would carry a lesser sentence of 18 months if convicted. The gun enhancement charge was also dropped against the movie's armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed. The DA said in order to avoid further litigious distractions by Mr. Baldwin and his attorneys, the DA and the special prosecutor have removed the firearm enhancement to the involuntary manslaughter charges in the death of Helena Hutchins on the Rust film set. The prosecution's priority is securing justice, not securing billable hours for big city attorneys. Ooh, not the, I like coming for their neck. Not the big city attorneys being called out. You know, I feel so conflicted about this Alec Baldwin thing because I really, in my heart, don't believe like he obviously had any bad intentions and I'm sure he feels bad. I just wish he was acting like publicly with like a, a little more grace and a little more remorse. Like I just think the way him and Hilaria have been acting like the last year since this happened, like doing, you know, side of the highway interviews, being thirsty on social media, kind of ignoring it. And I know for legal reasons, of course, you you're limited in what you can say. I just wish he would act with a little bit more humility and act like somebody, you know, who who, who gives a shit because I find it really disrespectful. And that, that's I, I don't really have any strong opinions on these charges being dropped I just like I'm kind of I'm kind of I, I kind of think he's disgusting like in his in his demeanor since since the incident and of course you're limited I know that in legal cases like this but I just think he could be acting with with a lot more more grace yeah I think there's a couple things happening one you're limited and I'm sure he's getting counsel to not act guilty so that right. so but he's also like a weird rude guy yeah you know like even on his best day before yep. he accidentally killed someone like I don't know that you're going to be like vibing with him. Yep. Um, yep. 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 Plus, so like, true. Hilaria is also a little weird. Um, yeah. As we've no, seen. They're, they're actually deeply unwell as a, as a couple. Together, and as I think they like fuel each other. Um, like, he has anger management issues we've seen yep. over the years, like with the parking Paparazzi, spot, the voicemail. Voice, right. Like, he's like troubled, kind of nuts. She's yeah. nuts in her own way. I think that they, when they get together and they talk, it's us against the world. Like so they come true. up with a plan that's nothing that you would ever come up with. Oh my God, you're so right. And you just like can't relate to his reaction. No, I can't. Plus I you can't. sprinkle just, in the lawyers who say, don't give them anything. So right. now they're just acting like buffoons. No, but they are. But that's what I'm saying. They are giving people stuff. Like that side of the highway TMZ interview. Like they're talking about it and they're being gross. Like I just, I have really deep rooted hatred for both of these people yeah and that's what I'm so I'm biased like that's what I'm I'm looking at this story through the lens of like I just I think they're disgusting yeah I just I want the justice system to do its thing I think the DA here like clearly 
wants to see justice be served I yeah. think the case like needs to go to court we need to know the facts of the situation because at the end of the day yes of course this was an accident but like you don't actually bring accidentally bring live bullets yeah to your job where you are a professional armorer like that just that happen. is that is what the remaining question that needs to be found and I think going to trial will most likely do that is how the fuck we're all playing pretend so how the fuck did a real ass bullet get in in this like the facility? shop that you go to for fake bullets wasn't even the shop that you go to for real there's no no there should be no nothing blurry about that especially for right. someone whose job it is the armorer they are an expert in this situation yeah um I agree I I hope that her family gets some sort of relief from whatever ends up happening because this is just it is the worst story it's just so sad mm -hmm. she literally like she's dead yeah the, the, the family members are pursuing civil yes uh, a settlement settlement so we shall see yeah but that's separate yeah separate um are you ready for our fifth and final story already the final yeah um it's a little reality tv drama because raquel levis decided this weekend yes. to just start some stuff yep she posted a picture of her and tom schwartz actually at carousel two photos of them in front of schwartz and sandys with the caption um wait sorry what was her caption it was just cuz or something like that just cuz yeah. emoji peace sign um which the comments went off on how disrespectful it was blah 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 katie maloney commented saying you really thought you did something here but these comments ate lolol three skeleton emojis when something ate can you explain what that means to the yeah no it's Gen good Z's it's big like sister oh you ate that like you're like damn like you killed it okay so these comments ate in a good way yeah like they, they ate, ate her, her up. fuck up they yeah. ate her up got it um someone responded to katie saying girl please we are not being sad over men with the personality of spray cheese in 2023 no ma'am we are not she said nobody's sad lol spray cheese i'm dead the amount of times this picture landed in my inbox i couldn't leave it alone desperado that i can imagine like oh my god everyone said it to her oh my god yeah no i kind of loved her sticking up for herself um because with the Raquel and Tom thing, and I'm not caught up on this season, so this is just like my POV from like knowing the history, is while I actually think they probably make a good couple, um, like after getting divorced from your wife and like you're this really close group of friends, like I just don't know why you have to go and date someone in the group of friends. Like it's so disrespectful. Like after all he did to Katie, like being quite literally the worst husband who ever walked the earth, um, it doesn't surprise me that this is what he did, but I, I've, feel as though her feelings are valid I have a lot of thoughts and as to why he has to date someone in the group of friends I think it just speaks to like his innate laziness like he doesn't want to yeah. go on a date he doesn't want to meet that's too much effort oh there's yeah. a single girl in the group who actually I think we probably would get along let's go out also You're right. in the comments so on the show they haven't gotten together yet Got Raquel it. has been it's been two episodes Raquel has been going on dates with Peter she just ended it she just like didn't like him Poor and then Peter and then no but like Lisa went up to him and was like this is you can't be dating your employees still like, right and, and so, she's much younger than him yeah and she works on he's the manager she's a server like no Lisa's like this isn't 2012 no right so right. then like literally five seconds later at the same party Raquel ended it and he was like okay um but Raquel wasn't into him anyways on the show, they haven't gotten together. But in the comments, I saw Sheena left a comment. I went to click it to expand it, my, but my Instagram was glitching and it took me just to the whole comment section. So I couldn't find Sheena's comment. But it said something to the effect that Kate, when it, the idea came up about Tom and Raquel, I think because of the Coachella rumors, which were just a rumor, that was like not true. But Katie said something like she wouldn't mind if they got together. She said that to mm. Sheena and then Sheena told that to Raquel and like it weirdly became like Katie's idea. Oh, yikes. But I think in, from Sheena's comment a little bit that I could read and understand, Katie said that when she was drunk. I don't know. Mm. So the way things unfold, we'll find out on the show. But I do think it's like it started as a rumor where it's like, that's not true, but maybe it should be. And how would Katie feel if it were true? And I actually could see like Tom and Raquel really getting along for a time I don't think they're meant for each other because they're both too similar and like nothing would ever really like get done happen yeah <laughs> happen like yeah um but it is interesting and it's crazy that she posted this picture like why no she was trying to start stuff and you know what Katie ate her up and I'm gonna be team Katie on this one because like it's it's hard to get divorced when you're in this like tight-knit kind of toxic group of friends like and to have your ex-man 
who for the most part like really I know they ended on good terms at the time but like I can't imagine Katie like looks back fondly on their marriage like he was fucking horrible publicly privately like he was the worst well in the most recent episode Schwartz and Sandy's is still not open but they're having a party for the Daily Mail like they're renting it out so they put it they get it open just in time to do one party they're not like running a business or anything and Schwartz and Katie are having a conversation he was like this place cost me everything like my family like my money you know and Katie's just like was it worth it and he can't say no because that's what he chose and so he would be Mm -hmm. like admitting but like no there's no way that's fucking worth it him and Sandoval like are in debt the the business is costing them a thousand dollars a day but (gasps) that it's not open right their partner who's like talking shit about them to Lisa he's like an older guy and like but they're worth talking shit about like they just think that coming up with cool craft cocktail ideas is gonna make a business successful having social media followers means that like you can open a bar but they don't know anything about the actual business in a strip mall in a strip mall oh I don't even know where it is like located it's in a mall and where strip mall if like okay I got it a mall that's strip strip mall like I would love for someone from LA to explain like is this even a good location? Like, would you ever go to this bar? Like, Tom, right. Tom, Pump, Sir, like, they are on the strip. The street in WeHo. Yeah, 100%. Because Lisa's no dummy. Yeah, and so Tom, Tom, like, I mean, Schwartz and Sandy's, like, looks nice on the inside, but it also looks so expensive. And it's, like... It's so big. You more it's than your huge. house for this. Like, no, but all of the decor, they have, like, a sound bath in the bathroom. And it's, like... I'm just coming here to get a drink. Like, no, I know. And not it's to like, go to the sound I don't know. bath. I don't know why Tom, well, I know why Tom Sandoval, because he's like a crazy, crazy egotist, but I don't know why they couldn't just be happy with the gift Lisa Vanderpump put on their plates. Like they have a successful restaurant where they literally did nothing. Yeah. Like they're simply the faces of, it's backed by Lisa. Lisa has this huge restaurant empire. Like, I don't know why they couldn't just be happy with that. Yeah. And so the, and nobody else got it. People on the show, no. Saucy, Jax, Katie, nobody else got that shit. No. Just because both of their names are Tom. Tom Schwartz never even fucking worked at a Lisa Vanderpump establishment. No, he tried to serve at Pride for a pump one year. And he had an and anxiety, had an anxiety attack, attack. Behind the bar. And left. Yeah. So they got this huge gift just like dumped in their laps and it wasn't enough. Yeah. So it's like kind of sad what happened between Tom and Katie because it kind of didn't have to happen that way. And like Tom said, I should have fought for her. But then he also said like, but it probably would have just prolonged the inevitable and like yeah. made it even more painful for Katie. Like now I think Katie's thriving. Like she seems like she's doing really well. She's going on dates. Like she seems better than she did last season when she was in an unhappy marriage. So yeah, I, that's like, what's best for her. Also, like everyone is kind of single. Like her and Lala are just like these yeah. single women. Queens. But they're also like serious people. So it's not like they're just right. like messing around. Well, that's the thing. It's that Katie and Tom were together for a long time. And for a while, I think they were like kids and they were immature. And then like over the over time, like Katie grew up and Tom never did. And he almost didn't have to. Again, like Katie's out here hustling, putting her life out on the fucking show, starting businesses starting podcasts and Tom like doesn't even work at the restaurant gets his own restaurant like everything is he's just like entitled like right because everything has been handed to him but I actually think that like that would have been fine but then to not not only like to not contribute but then to take away like I'm mortgaging our house I'm spending all of our money on this project with shit the person, that you worked for I'm with, no, on this project with a person who's so disrespectful towards you like if Katie's gonna be like the breadwinner and the boss in the relationship yep. like she better get some fucking respect, respect in her house and if you can't get that goodbye you're a hundred percent right. No, a hundred percent. Everything you just said is fucking facts. So that it is what it is. Anyways, and so how was the new season overall? It's good. You know, for me, it's kind of like I, when I watch it, I don't feel like oh my god, I have to get on the toast and like share my hot takes. I yeah. watch it more like a comfort show. I really just like the they've established a really good cast. There's not really new people except for James's new girlfriend, which is like so crazy that he's literally living with some like he has a new Raquel and it's it's a replacement. But I'm really proud of Raquel because it must have been really hard for her to break up with James, and she you know is has always been like this little like deer in the headlights like yeah. But she's really like finding herself and like becoming confident and it's it's really nice to see and like it must be really hard like you broke up with your fiance and now he's with someone else and like you have to go to all these events and it's just he's there. Yeah, yeah, she's she's struggling and I can like it I think she's going through a hard time reasonably so, but she's remaining strong in her convictions and and I I think that's good. I mean, we'll see what happens with her and Tom, but so far I'm like she's kind of the star of the show right now. Wow. Because like she's going on dates and like it's just like what's Raquel doing? What does Raquel think of this? Has Raquel met the new girlfriend? Yeah. And she's really kind of I think the bridge of like that old 
school because she's like tied to James. But she's really like the new gen generation of Vanderpump Rules. So I can see. But they like dropped all that shit. Yeah, no, I know. But she's the only one who really stuck around because she had like ties to everyone through James. And so she really kind of is like the future of the show. Which is so crazy because when she first came on the show, like nobody even Uh, paid her any mind. Like nobody gave her any respect. Um, But I think she's holding her own. And of course, like I love Lala. And we only get like, like Lala needs her own show because of what she's going through. Like we only get bits and pieces. And it's all so vague. Like it's not enough. Like so there's the LA Times article that had come out that's like Randall was running a a casting couch and he was... uh, run having assistants like run drugs whatever and then she's like that's not even the tip of the iceberg compared to what people have told me the things that mm. I've heard the things that he's done I'm like what are the things what are like you know and I it's think, just yeah so crazy I mean we now know I think some of that is what his ex-wife was saying about the yeah um alleged children chill pedophilia um but she's just going through it yeah um I kind of feel the same way about Jersey like it's very much like a comfort show because I I love those characters mm-hmm. and I love the husbands and it's like I I don't and especially it's the beginning of the season not much has happened that like I need to get on here and like start my hot takes but it's just so good and I, I think a lot of people are like getting fatigued by like the Gorga Judice drama not me not me because you know what I've got fatigued of the draw of the dynamic between the Gorgas and the Judices where like Teresa would act like an animal and the Gorgas were you know silent because if they did anything even remotely you know speaking speaking up wise they would become you know family family so i find this exciting because they're fucking standing up for themselves and maybe they're not doing everything in the right way that everyone wants them to but like i i dig it like i dig it i am firmly team melissa and i think the tide is actually turning like i've been seeing a lot on social media people being like team tree was right all along i'm like what are you fuckers watching because i see this really delusional really fucking mean woman and i see melissa who hate her love her like you cannot deny how she has just shut her fucking mouth for five years and she's a human being still who's like a mom and has her own fucking opinions and i'm firmly team melissa team and you know dolores because she's having like a really big falling out with jennifer Dolores is like kind of coming to the Margaret Melissa and like I don't know if she's gonna stay there but if that happens like I am obsessed I love Dolores that's what we always needed every season comes down to that it's like Dolores in the middle and it's like to me her blind spot to me it's so clear yep her blind spot is Teresa but what's really interesting they have two new girls um actually really like them both they're like young and fun and funny um I can't remember their names one of them is Rachel and I don't know the other girl's name I feel like is it Jackie or Jennifer Jackie or Jennifer for sure no, because there's another woman who's like a, a new friend of who's like this hilarious like Jewish woman and she's psychotic and she just like eats the whole time and she's hilarious. That's Jen Fessler. But what is the new blonde housewife's name? Whatever. Um, but so they're obviously there and Jackie Goldschneider is demoted. And I don't know if Jackie Goldschneider like knows that she's demoted at the time of filming this, but like, and I never really saw her as like a thirsty or desperate girl, but like I do now, like she's... <laughs> Okay, so she like start, picks a fight with one of the new girls. They're, they're talking about some drama at the house. Like the new girl, Rachel, is like giving the down low to a group of people about like what she just saw. And Jackie like stops her in the middle of the conversation. It's like, I just want to let you know, like you literally haven't like looked me in the eyes once. And the girl's like, what? Like she's new. This is her first time meeting the group. And she just like happened to find herself like in the middle of some tea. So she's going over to tell the rest of the group. And Jackie's like, you're just like totally dismissing me. And it's like, oh my God, Jackie, stop. Like, I feel pain for you. Like, it was so <laughs> embarrassing. Um, like, I wanted to die. And so now I'm kind of seeing her through this new light where I feel like I've been on this journey with her. Like last season, I was like kind of riding for for Jackie. Like, I felt like she was so grounded and so, you know, vulnerable. Like, I just really liked her. And now I'm seeing her in this like thirsty lens. I'm like, get out of here. Like, stop. It was really, it was painful. Did anybody else's like butthole clench? But she's like, <laughs> I'm going to stop you for a second. Like, you haven't even like looked me in the eyes. Like, I'm literally standing right here. We're you're like, dying. yeah, we know you're, we're like, we know you're irrelevant and demoted. That's why we're not looking you in the eyes. Get the fuck out. Um, but as always, Margaret's my fucking queen, and I ride for her at dawn, and it's pretty good. Nothing really major has happened. Um, but you and I both are now caught up on Summer House. Yes, and this is the show where it's like, oh my God, I told you like I'm watching it because I've, I have some things to say, and I'm shocking myself with what I'm going to say. So I have a feeling I know what you're going to say because you told me you had this hot take and I was ready. No, I don't think it's a hot take. And I went on Twitter and and weirdly, and so this makes me question myself, everybody agrees with what I'm saying. Yeah, I think I'm going to agree with what you're saying too as it pertains to Lindsay and Carl. Yeah, so 
I'm team Lindsay and Carl. I want to start with episode one, my takeaway from it, which was that Maya, I think, was wrong. Like, I think Lindsay and Carl are very, you know, obsessed with each other and and dependent on each other. And they have this, like, really... Maybe it's an odd relationship compared to some of the other relationships in the house, like Amanda and Kyle, who, like... Are so separate. I was looking at their relationship in episode two as, like, really the opposite end of like Lindsay and Carl where it's like Kyle is like always running around with that blonde girl yep. Amanda like they're literally like sitting playing a Separate. game till like 1 30 a.m like that would never be Lindsay and Carl and like I get that like Lindsay and Carl I feel like are in a very adult relationship very quickly because one they are older two he is sober like their relationship just got really serious really fast and like Lindsay is just like very protective and I feel like last season I didn't like her because when I would I didn't know her that well because I never watched the other seasons but the vibe I got from her was just like she was this overgrown child like running around her party in a unicorn outfit just like yep I don't like I, I like I just didn't like that vibe and like it was very like, pick me and you know I'm with yep. friends with all the guys but yep, this yep, yep. season she's just like a very committed girlfriend and a very serious girlfriend and I really respect that from her and so when they were coming from, when they were in LA coming from Family Feud and she's in the car with Lindsay and Maya are in the car and Maya said to Lindsay oh I just texted Carl and asked him if he wanted to smoke a joint like to me that's fucking crazy and not even because of the sobriety thing but because if I'm in the car with someone's girlfriend yeah I'm gonna go through the girlfriend like not even because I I think you're coming on it's to him. respect it, yeah it's just like why are you texting my boyfriend when like I'm right here like why don't you ask me if like you and Carl want to smoke a joint or something like no but also you can't over underestimate not underestimate under you can't even glaze over the sobriety thing right, right. no no the like sobriety huge... thing is like the huge thing and that's what Lindsay was really focused on but I can understand how Maya was confused because last season they smoked last summer and he was sober last summer and now he's a different kind of sober she didn't know that like it she didn't even think to ask that a lot of people yeah. are like California sober whatever but to me the idea that we're both sitting in a car and you're texting my boyfriend about making plans like without me is fucking weird I don't think that I means agree. you're in love with him or you're coming on to him but I think that's weird but Lindsay swear Lindsay said she didn't say that no I, and you know what I don't the think she, time, I don't think she did say that but the whole time I was believing Maya but she was kind of acting nuts on the beach when like she had that up, conversation with Lindsay it was a, te- a class she was obviously of, drunk she yeah she was drunk so don't have a, a serious conversation that you've yeah. been putting off for two weeks or actually like six months at this point yeah um it was like a class in how to lose an argument like nothing yeah. she was saying was making any sense she was like up well, until I don't that s- point i don't want to circle the drain on this i'm like well you brought it up like Lindsay, all, no. had, all she had to Lindsay would do was sit there sit up until that point i was like kind of like on maya's side and then when Lindsay explained herself and she was kind of like calm and i think she was sober because she's not drinking as much and maya had been drinking all day like maya did not come off looking good in that conversation at all and it just seems to me like everyone this year was like we're coming for Lindsay and carl and it's like where was that energy last year and the year before because there have been i have not been really a Lindsay fan ever i think i had the same feeling where it's like she's this kind of overgrown child and she's just not my type of girl like mm-hmm. kind of pick me um and I always wish like people would go harder for her. Even last year, like I know Sierra was wrong for throwing the drink, but at the the cause of the argument, like Sierra had been right. And so it's like, where where has that energy been? Now you're when she's when she's actually grown up and changed, and like she is a committed girlfriend and she's really different and she's like a, a mature girl. Now we're all coming for her. And you know what I really didn't fucking like hmm. was the the lover boy stuff because so the second Carl expressed that he wanted to be more valued he wanted a bigger role he wanted literally the next day amanda and kyle are not even trying to pretend like they're being so obvious they're like oh carl took off to california and didn't tell us he always is doing stuff like this just trying to like put him down a peg so that when he does ask for like a role a raise or a role he can be like well you've been just kind of like out of you know sync the past couple like it was so obvious what they were doing they had never said anything like that before yeah about him also with maya like i feel like i I, the whole time I was like teetering on you know what I don't think this is appropriate like I'm the kind of girlfriend who I'm just kind of like a Lindsay like I, if I'm in a serious relationship like we're serious like you're not like hanging out with my boyfriend on the side smoking yep. joints even though I know I I really have no belief that you guys are like hooking up or anything it's just like there's boundaries like they're just and, and it's adult it's adult but then Maya was like she really is so worried about like she wants her friendship with Carl back because they should flash back to last season they had like a nice friendship because yeah. they're both kind of like the same energy Quiet. on the same wavelength 
But then Maya sits across the table from Kyle while Kyle yep. is saying the nastiest fucking shit about Carl. And Maya, mm-hmm. who's his really close friend and wants their friendship to be the same that it was, is egging him on. Doesn't utter one word in defense. And it didn't even strike me until Danielle did that. And I was Ugh. like, that's okay. a friend. No, yeah, but Danielle bothers me so much only because like she has really coasted on this show. And I feel like there have people been people who have come and go and she has made a place for herself on this show is just like being a mouthpiece for Lindsay and Carl now mostly Lindsay and I find it infuriating like when I could not help but roll my eyes when she like interrupted Carl and was like you can't sit here you were just talking about my friend like no, oh my god, at, get at another first, get another stick okay agreed I don't know her as just the mouthpiece for Lindsay and Carl I know her as like Lindsay's friend and at first when she said you can't sit here I heard what you said I was like oh that's like a little immature but then she was just like defending Carl she was the only one like because if someone was talking about your friend like that and like and, and they're and, not around. And they're not around, but also like the damaging things that he were he was saying about like yeah. what he did two years ago as an addict and like holding it over his head, like that you gave him a chance. But like, what kind of chance is that if you're just going to constantly make him feel bad about it? Yeah. Like someone needed to say that. And if you don't say it, then you're not a true friend to Carl. You're an acquaintance. Sure, whatever. We're all friends. Yeah. But like, no, you want to be a real friend? Like you stand up for someone when someone is saying such horrible things about someone who's doing all of the work like trying yeah. to like being better has changed his life like why are you going to bring him back to that no it was super fucked up I just I couldn't help but roll my eyes it's like oh my god here she goes again like, I know that was just like your bias towards her and I yes I, but when she was done I was like you are 100% you're right. right and you're right and it yes. just highlighted to me that like Maya's you know a missed friendship with Carl is so such bogus because if you really yeah. cared about him as a friend you wouldn't have stood for that you know, and then Kyle and Maya were on Watch Rapids Live just kind of parroting like the same shit they were doing during the episode. And and Andy asked, like, do you feel like it's fair for you to like bring up references to what somebody did years ago and, and someone who has like since better themselves? And they just like continue to like defend their poor behavior and the L.A. thing and the Coke thing. So I feel like they feel really justified because like now it's like when you're a part of the the bigger group and everyone's kind of backing away from Carl and Lindsay you feel justified and so they were kind of feeling like heroes on Watch Happens Live and I was like you're just giving bully energy yeah and I don't think the audience is it, the audience is going for it based on what I saw but that's not what I base my opinions on at all I'm just like these are two people who are trying to better themselves who are in a serious relationship who are committed to each other and like of course that's going to change every other facet of their lives it's going to change th- what their nights look like they're lame yep. now their relationships with friends especially of the other sex like that just is how it is especially yep. when you're with someone that like is not gonna like some girls like Amanda it's they're in a series they're married but married. like she doesn't care and not every girl is like that sorry yeah no and then I actually I agree with you in the second episode I felt found myself comparing Lindsay and Carl's relationship to uh Kyle and Amanda's and there's a lot about Kyle and Amanda's it's like very unconventional and I think like a little um just from my POV like a little bizarre um and if I if you think about my relationship like I'm definitely more like Carl and Lindsay but I don't find like I don't I honestly don't even think that they're boring no not like, at all drinking and- all day at the beach all day like to want to go to bed at midnight after being at the beach till dark isn't crazy no not crazy and everyone's like sitting around and especially in the first episode being like Carl and Lindsay are making it weird Carl and Lindsay this Carl and Lindsay that every time they pan to Carl and Lindsay they're smiling they're talking to someone Lindsay's like getting along with all the new girls mm-hmm. I'm like what are you ta-? like I'm sure to be in the house there was definitely like this tension because there was like things going on behind the scenes but I didn't get a bad attitude from them at all. You know what I want to say, because we haven't even spoken about her, uh, because she's like not really, Paige and Sierra are like not in the drama right now. Um, I will say I really do love, and I'm like, I I find it admirable that they're so welcoming. Like the new girls always gravitate towards Paige and Sierra, not Lindsay and Danielle. Um, And now Maya's like very much a part of that crew. Gabby already is like up there. And Sam, I feel like is like kind of like a, cool girl like hangs out with the guys drove out with that new guy who was in the military um but I just find it really I feel like on reality shows that's like never the case it's always really hard your first summer and I don't think Maya would say her first summer was really hard I don't think Sierra would have said it either like Paige is like really welcoming yeah she's a girl's girl yeah I thought like I I really like that about her yeah but I feel like (laughs) they're not exclusionary towards like new girls whatever but like they are towards Lindsay honestly and like even though sometimes it's like maybe I wouldn't want to like Lindsay's a lot especially in past seasons like 
the only people who are being excluded are Carl and Lindsay, even though it seems like they're right trying. now, right, right now. now, right. But like, but by the way, like in like Lindsay's not a girl's girl. That's why like they all have this girl gang and Lindsay has not been a part of it because she's not like into female. She's not one of those girls. So like she found like a hanger on her in Danielle and she's always been like with the guys, like we could sleep in the same bed. Like, yeah, that's just who she's been. Yeah. But I also think there are girls who are like, Say, like, obviously right now Lindsay's sharing a room with Carl. If she were single, she wouldn't be sharing a room with, like, new girls because she's just not that kind of person. But I right. think that's okay. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if it would be for me to share a room with three other girls, honestly. If there's no, a room no, where I could have by myself, like, I... I, I like, whenever all the girls sit on Paige's bed, like, in their street clothes... I know. Um, And they're all... Like, that would... I couldn't sleep in that bed. Yeah. Like, I couldn't put my... Like, I just couldn't. What's the new guy's name? Chris? Chris? yeah um actually i like him yeah he, who was reminding me at the beginning of like alex from last season like who got so left behind <laughs> um because he was like mute but i feel like he has good energy i feel like he can't get arrested i feel like he likes likes everyone on a romantic level and like nobody likes him back um and when he brought his friend who gabby ended up liking and they had that horrendous conversation horrendous. about astronomy oh my god she was so gabby lost me gabby lost me with the rising moon oh and my god that was someone horrible. off completely, completely because they're a cancer because they're a cancer man and your ex was a cancer man and he did something bad claudia i was so unco- and then like that's why you're single that's no, why and that single. guy was so cute and by the way i made the best call what was that guy's name like jezer jerez 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 thank you he is i have such a good call you know who he looks like mm. a grown-up jackson mahomes i could not stop <laughs> you're saying obsessed it. i'm you're obsessed, obsessed. They, look, they look so similar i don't have jackson mahomes's brain ingrained in oh. face ingrained in my brain like you do oh couldn't be me he doesn't live rent free in my mind like he does in yours so I feel like it's like a start of a really good season. Like the dynamic has really shifted. Like the Carl and Kyle of it all. And then the Carl and Lindsay of it all. Um, it's going to be interesting because it seems like everyone's ganging up on two people. And I'm like kind of not here for it. Yeah. Whenever everyone's ganging up on someone, like I gravitate towards the someone. But I also in this case just happen to relate to Lindsay as a girlfriend. Like, yeah. And I, I have a lot of respect for her, like becoming sober and changing yep. her whole life. And like, and she really cares about it. And him. I think they get engaged at the end of the summer and everyone's like, whoa, it's too fast. And like, I just don't think so. These two people have known each other for years. They're older. They know what they want. They've been through like a grueling year together. Like, I think they're so right for each other. They're so in love. They say the nicest things about each other. I don't feel like they're putting on at no, all. No, me neither. I'm really in, like, I'm in support of their relationship. I Me also too. feel I think like it's nice. two two more things. One, when both when they were marrying the conversation between Carl and Lindsay outside about Lover Boy and Amanda and Kyle in the kitchen, I felt like both girlfriends were giving such good advice. I thought the same thing. To Amanda, their dumb rational queen, fucking men. Amanda, rational queen, rational queen. Lindsay, rational queen. They're both saying such nice things. Like this is your friend first. You need to remember that it's going to be hard, but it's going to be okay. Like give them the benefit of the doubt. Blah, blah blah. I thought they were both giving really good advice. And the other thing, when Kyle is like, you know, now that he's with Lindsay, he doesn't work as much, and he's not doing this, and he's like, yeah. When you go from being single and having nothing going on except for this job that maybe helped pull you out of a bad time mm-hmm. to now having a person, like. Your life you've re- becomes you reprioritize. Your life becomes different, and also to have a person who sees how hard you work, like it gives you perspective on a situation that you can't see from the inside. The reason why these two can't communicate is because, like, Carl got into a relationship and changed for the better. Where it's like Kyle is the same guy now as he was the day before he met Amanda. Like, yeah, she didn't require that of him, and it works for them. But like most people, grow up when they get into an adult relationship. Kyle has not, you know, talking to himself, drinking in the middle of the night by himself, playing games with girls, being his towel falling off. Like he's the same guy. Yeah, like Carl has changed and Lindsay has changed, and I think change it can be a good thing, and a lot of the times it is a good thing, and I don't think that it's bad so i'm so just, on watch what happens live they confirmed so last week it had come out that carl left lover boy um and kyle said he actually hasn't been with the company since november okay that makes sense given the timeline and, and i'm glad also it kind of makes me realize now the way that kyle was talking about carl when he hired him as like he was unhirable i'm the only one he probably got a really big role and not a lot of money because like kyle could get what he needed out of him because like he's unhirable you know it's not yeah. like he's competing for the biggest jobs and so yeah. now he's put in the work he's so serious like he's sober he's also going to bars and doing events which they don't he say, shouldn't be they don't say this but like 
Yes, it's in the role of a VP of sales to like go to the bars and do events, but he's also a public figure. A so he's like giving his face and th- like a hosting gig at a club or a bar is a paying gig and he's not getting paid for stuff like that. Unless he has equity in the company, which I imagine that he does. Kyle did also say that um, he, but when the time, when he left, he's, Carl was making six figures. That makes sense. Yeah, 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 they had asked. I'm just giving you facts. But like six figures could be anything from right, a hundred to nine hundred. Yeah, 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 yeah. To nine, 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 nine. Yeah, yeah. And compared to what Kyle makes, who knows? But um, so it's actually it's a it's really it's so, when I think about the genesis of Summer House, like this great concept, like Hamptons reality show, and how they fucking dropped the ball those first couple of seasons. It was just like such bad television and I couldn't believe they kept it going and I stopped watching to where it is now like it's so good yeah it is good but they do have a little bit of a problem right now where like the Carl Lindsay stuff is very interesting but nobody wants to turn up real like nobody's like there aren't that many single people the people who are single are, are judging men because they're cancer man even though the perfect man was right in front of her like it's not giving that like early Vanderpump Jersey Shore energy where it's like we're down for whatever we're gonna stay out all night I relate to you know I want to go to bed too it doesn't bother me but I think that there's not a lot going on except for Carl and Lindsay yeah that's true but uh, you know the they have a really like the audience loves this cast like I I do think the show performs really well and I, I don't think they're at a place yet like where Vanderpump Rules was where it was like you're all too old and it's confusing what you're doing here yeah yeah um and they should have had more guys in the house. Like, what yeah, the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? And if the house can't accommodate it, like, get a different house. Yeah, no, them shutting down a five, four out of nine of the bedrooms, not cool. No. Get a different house, get more guys. Like, we want to see people finding love. That's what we yeah, want Yeah, I thought that was fucking weird. Yeah. Um, so that's your summer house recap. That is your show. Jackie and I will be back later today. Remember, 5 p.m. Eastern time, we have our live show on Patreon called Freaking Fred. Make sure to become a Patreon member at patreon.com slash the toast. Thank you so much for listening to the toast, the millennial morning show, where we deliver the past five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as podcasts anywhere. Podcasts can be found on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, I already cast box all the places where you've listened to podcasts. Find us at five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Hope you guys have an amazing day. We'll see you tomorrow for Hump Day. Love ya. Bye. Love ya.